Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the latest edition in my bookshelf tour, and so without further ado, I'm just going to get started. As always, you know, there's a whole playlist of these and stuff. Let me fiddle with my hair as well. Wee. I just had my hat on. Oh my god, what happened? Okay, so first up today we have Soul Reflections by Nikki Leone. This is a collection of poetry by Austin McCauley. This is just sort of one of many collections, really. I, I used to get sent a lot of poetry for review for my blog, and I basically stopped taking poetry collections on for the most part because it's usually not very good so I'm gonna read you some here uh, soulmates happen in many ways not all soulmates stay forever some are here only briefly to guide us to lead us forward to our next emotion they help us clear out baggage bringing out your best qualities awakening a new you from inside they always leave a lasting impression their effect will be for the positive so there we go Nikki Leone then we have Freakonomics by Stephen D. Levitt and Stephen J. Dubner. Basically, this is non-fiction, and it is about economy, but it's really interesting. And so, for example, it looks at the economies of drug dealing, for example, and, uh, you know, uses all of these different real-life case studies and then backs it up with data as well to show, you know, how freaky economics can be, I guess. It's actually a really fascinating book, which is what you possibly heard of this one, you know? It's got some general appeal, for sure. Then we have The Brain Cell by Dr. David Lewis, When Science Meets Shopping. And this is basically like almost, I read it because I used to work in marketing, but also it uses kind of psychology as well and gives you insights into the way people think. So for example, it talks about, they did a study that found that playing different kinds of music in the wine sections of shops, it might not change how much wine people buy, but it does make them buy more expensive wine. Another great example of this was at Disneyland, where in Disneyland, as you enter, all the buildings lean very slightly back. It's by like 1.5 degrees or something. So too, too little for you to notice and for you to think it looks weird. But because it leans slightly backwards, it looks as though it goes on for further than it actually does. And then it works the same way, the other way around. So when you're walking towards the exit, everything's leaning towards you as you're walking towards the exit. And so it makes you feel as though everything's closer and so you don't have as far to go. I definitely recommend that. That was a 5 out of 5 for me. Very rare for like a marketing non-fiction book to blow my mind as much as that did. Alright, here we have... Uh, this Is this in the right order? Yes. Okay, so there, here we have some poetry collections by Katie Lewington. So here comes The Sun. This is Travel Poetry. Here we have Hotel Life by Katie Lewington, which I guess is also travel poetry, really. And then we have Put Me Down, I'm Terrible. Katie Lewington is a British poet and... Um, which, which is quite interesting because I think this this is an American publisher. Not sure about this one, but they're all three different publishers, I think, as well. And, um, you know, she works hard. She also has some issues with mental health as well, which I think this one mainly goes into. And she's written in anthologies and stuff before as well. I'm going to read you one of her poems, but I definitely recommend you check her out. Let's go for uh, a public health warning. A rimmed seat, halo coloured and yellow stains, hard porcelain, a heavy suspicion, a pissing rain. Lou Roll Slim, a nude skeleton, flickering light, graffiti and a name, concentrating, a prison door, an awful odour, chain of keys hooked onto the waist of the toilet attendant, a grim-faced woman with a gruff voice of a would-be smoker, a sprinkler tap, a soaking, soap long gone and not been replaced, how refreshing, hand dryer, talkative chat, blowing at crotch level, I am glad to be released. There we go. Then we have these three little things which are beautiful. These are little chat books. So this is by Jeffrey Lewis who is also a singer-songwriter and he writes um, comics and um, graphic novels and stuff as well. So these are all written and illustrated by him. So here we have Sonnet Youth, Confession is Sex plus Kill Your Idols, Sonnet Youth, Daydream Nation, and Sonnet Youth, Goo. Now Basically, these are all reimagined versions of Sonic Youth albums. So, the, for example, they have all the songs in them. So, uh, Daydream Nation starts with Teenage Riot, for example, and it's written in the form of a sonnet. So, uh, a whispered spirit voice commences calling. The future's foggy and the past is checkered. In spirit deep desires, we are falling. Till our overture complete, we start the record. First thing, whether they speak it or they rhyme it, one topic dominates each screed and sermon. The crazy wind and rain and nasty climate, but is it true? That's what we must determine. The time has come to get it, let's not rattle. We're sticking to our guns and keeping calm. A martial amp will be the call to battle. We'll paint a zero on our idol's palm. Awaken, hit the road, all cognoscenti. Unrest has flared in those aged 12 through 20. So there we go. Very cool, and he sells these on his website as well, I do believe. 
Then we have Monday Madness by Emma Leverton. And I believe I was sent this. It's just a little kid's book. I mean, I, I can't, I, yeah, can't really remember it. Here we have a graphic novel by Self Made Heroes. This is uh, Stardust Nation by Deborah Levy and Andre Klimowski. And uh, yeah, this is about a guy who works in advertising. He's a high flying, heavy drinking advertising boss. Here we have Elizabeth Levy, Star Wars Return of the Jedi, adapted by Elizabeth Levy, with eight pages of colour photos from the movie. I mean, you can see the print here, the print size. Ten chapters of 50 odd pages, so it does miss a lot. But um, I, I used to enjoy that as a, as a little kid. Here we have In the Plex by Stephen Levy, How Google Thinks, Works and Shapes Our Lives. So this is basically the definitive book on Google. Now it's not necessarily super up to date, although I imagine there's probably a more recent edition than the one that I've got anyway. But it is really kind of insightful to get a, a feel for their culture and how they work as a company and uh, what makes them tick, you know? And also it covers all the founding and all of this stuff. It even covers the fact that um, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, who founded Google, they were schooled at a Montessori school where you're kind of taught through play. And, you know, he kind of makes the argument that that's a big part of Google's culture, you know? Okay, next up we have E.E.E., -E -E, a novel by Tao Lin. So this is a kind of almost a psychedelic novel. Let me just read you the blurb here. Confused yet intelligent animals attempt to interact with confused yet intelligent humans, re resulting in the death of Elijah Wood, Salmon Rushdie, and Wong Kar Vai. The destruction of a Domino's pizza delivery car in Orlando and a vegan dinner at a sushi restaurant in, Man in Manhattan attended by a dolphin, a bear, a moose, an alien, three humans and the President of the United States of America who lectures on the arbitrary nature of consciousness, truth and the universe before getting drunk and playing poker. Now I know that Mark Nash here on Booktube isn't a big Taolin fan but I love him so I would definitely say check that out and also this, this is one of his collections of poetry You are a little bit happier than I am by Towelin or flicking at random as That night with the green sky It was snowing and you were kind of beautiful We were in the city and every time I looked up someone was leaning out a window staring at me I could tell you liked me a lot or maybe even loved me But you kept walking at this strange speed You kept going in angles and it confused me I think maybe you were thinking that you'd make me disappear by walking at strange speeds and in a strange and curvy way. But how would that cause me to vanish from Earth? And that hurts. Why did you want me gone? That hurts. Why? Why? I don't know. Some things can't be explained, I guess. The sky, for example, was green that night. Oh yeah, I love Taolin. He's great. Here we have a bunch of books by, well, various different authors. They're all here under John Lloyd. So this is... 1,342 QI facts to leave you flabbergasted. Let's see. Cured pork inserted into the nostrils can stop nosebleeds. Not very vegan though. All right, 1,423 QI facts to bowl you over. When the Queen toured Australia in 1954, 75% of Australians went to see her. The QI book of general ignorance. This is John Lloyd and John Mitchinson, who are the show's creators. And this basically takes some questions and then delves a bit deeper into them. So, how many words do Eskimos have for snow? And it's often said they have loads, but they have no more than four, according to this. And then it goes into detail as to why. The QI Book of the Dead by John Lloyd and John Mitchinson. So yeah, they've picked 600 people who have lived and died at some point and written about them. Then we have the second book of General Ignorance by John Lloyd and John Mitchinson. Uh... I assumed I had the book of general ignorance, but maybe I don't. And the idea here is everything you know is still wrong. So that QI is a British TV show, and there's a round in that called General Ignorance, where it's like general knowledge, except what people generally think they know isn't always correct. And so it kind of highlights that. So that book is basically taking things that you thought you know and debunking them. Here we have QI's John Lloyd and John Mitchinson Advanced Banter. So this is a book of quotations. If dandelions were hard to grow, they would be most welcome on any lawn. That's Andrew Mason. Okay, here we have Fugitive Colours by Liz Lockhead, winner of the Queen's Gold Medal for Poetry 2015. And um, I want to say, yeah, she's, uh, she was, the, yeah, she was, Sco uh, she was appointed as Scotland's Macar, which is a bit like uh, the, the Poet Laureate here in the UK. And yeah, it's just beautiful poetry, really. She, it was very good. Here we go. Persimmons for Tom. You must have loved those three globes of gorgeous orange, dense and glowing in our winter kitchen. Enough to put coloured pencil and biro to the reddest page left in your rainbow sketchbook and make this drawing of three persimmons in that Chinese bowl. The supermarket flagged them up as this season's Sharon fruit, but we prefer persimmon. 
For didn't it seem the rose of their other name would neither taste or sound as sweet, would be a fruit of quite another colour? Such strange fruit, we bit and ate, enjoyed. Before we did, you drew them. Oh, you'd say, so what? Drawing to you is as everyday as apples, but I know, they'd have come and gone like Christmas, if you'd not put them down and made them worth more than the paper they're inscribed on. See those deft soft strokes of aquamarine and white that make our tabletop lie flat, the fruits plump out real and round and perfectly persimmon coloured upon their lilac shadows in the bowls deep. Still life, still life, sweetheart, in what's already eaten and done with. Now, looking, I can taste again. Here we go. Down to a Sunless Sea by Martin Lawrence and Deep Thunder. Now, Deep Thunder is artificial intelligence. This is basically a dystopian London kind of setting. Um, but what's strange is that it has its own language in this that was created by the AI. And it's almost reminiscent of the droogs in uh, A Clockwork Orange. So if you read that, I think you'd probably like this. But also, just if you have an interest in AI, it's cool to read something that was co-written with one. Here we have Lakuma Magazine. Uh, this is issue number... I don't know, it doesn't say. But um, this is basically a, a vegan lifestyle magazine. I don't normally keep magazines on my bookcase unless I read them from cover to cover. So there are occasionally literary magazines and other stuff here and there that I've read. And uh, yeah, I just enjoyed it. It was good. And then we have The Original Ginny Moon by Benjamin Ludwig. Uh, this is an ARC that I, I received. And basically, the protagonist, Ginny Moon, has uh, autism. And uh, I think the guy who wrote this also has, I think he adopted a daughter with autism and it's about somebody adopting a daughter with autism. Really well written and I've just heard good things even from, you know, autistic readers and people who can kind of identify with that rep. But um, yeah, it was brilliant. If you, it reminded me of like The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon, so. And that's a good book. Okay, next up we have El Luna, The Crossroads of Should and Must, Find and Follow Your Passions. So this is kind of like a self-help kind of book. Um, and it, I mean, it is a bit hippy sometimes and whatnot, but its actual layout is beautiful. And this kind of book as well, I, I think it is card, is it cardboard? It feels almost like wood, this cover. I mean, look, look how thick the cover is. You see what I mean? And uh, it's just a really good quality book and just beautiful, beautifully illustrated. Um, yeah, I mean, check it out if you like that kind of thing. Otherwise, you know, it's not, it's not, it, it's not life changing, but it's, it's cool. Here we have Lunar Poetry, The Amazing New Adventures of Lunar Poetry 6 and 7. So I'm guessing the reason I have this. Am I in here? Let's have a look. Oh, I am in here. Two poems. Uh, here we have Philip Limbury with Isabel Oakshot, Farmageddon, The True Cost of Cheap Meat. One of the best non-fiction books out there about meat production and the damage it's doing to the environment, to our health and just to the world in general, you know. So very much recommend that one. And then we have Farmageddon in Pictures by Philip Limbury. And this is just to sort of show you what's actually, you know, going on. So here we have some, for example, battery farm chickens and, you know, stuff like that. Not very nice. Not very nice. Here are some cows being kept. Yeah. Anyway. Then we have Individuals, Flash Fiction by Lao Ma. 55 stories of less than a thousand words. And I believe he's either, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, Chinese. And he's one of the few sort of Chinese flash fiction writers. We also get some illustrations in here as well. I was sent this for review, but it was very good. I was very impressed and I would very recommend it. Okay, here we have Austin McCauley Publishers Limited. So we're on to the M's I see with Lauma. And this is their book catalogue sampler of 2015, I see. So I got this during my first visit to London Book Fair. And I did actually read, again, I only keep things if I read them from cover to cover. So that's why that's still here. But, um... I don't know, there are some sketchy things about that publisher. I don't want to get sued or anything, so I'm not going to talk about it. But if you Google them and look at some of their sample contracts and stuff, I'm not sure. Here we have Damn You Autocorrect by Gillian Madison. So these are just literally screenshots of autocorrect. So, for example, this one to someone's mum. I'm okay, no worries. The phallus one, so I'm happy. Feel better, mummy. Here we have Goodnight Mr. Tom by Michelle Magorian. I should actually reread this soon. I read this at school. And this is one of those because we used to read them in English and I was a fast reader so I used to read ahead so by the time the class had finished reading the whole thing out aloud I'd read it like three or four times. So I have fond memories of this even though it is also very sad. Here we have Rocco and the Nightingale by Adrian Magson. This is another one that I was sent. It's a fairly generic murder mystery like crime novel. I can't say I'd recommend it over some of the other ones that are in my collection but you know if it's your thing why not. 
Uh, Michael Mainelli and Ian Harris, The Price of Fish, A New Approach to Wicked Economics and Better Decisions. And so again, this kind of builds on, um, on, on Freakonomics. So if you, want, if you want to get one, you might as well check them both out. But Freakonomics is like the better known one. Then we have Bird Box by Josh Malaman. I don't need to say too much about this because everybody's heard of this by now. I picked this up and then read it before watching the Netflix series. I enjoyed them both. They were both different, but they were both good in their own ways. I would recommend, again, I'd recommend them both. If you've seen the Netflix one, you probably don't need to read the book and vice versa. However, if you're a fan of it, then uh, definitely check them both out, especially because they're different, you know? Here we have Sophia Khan is Not Obliged by Aisha Malik, and we also have, uh, uh, what's it called? The Other Half of Happiness by Aisha Malik. So these are both actually advanced copies that I was given as well. And um, I really enjoyed them actually, and I know like some people like uh, Eva from Fred Weezy died laughing. She liked the first one, but not the second one, and I can see why because they they almost function as standalones because the characters are almost inconsistent in the way they act between the two. But uh, they're still very well written, and they have you know it's a pretty good. I would, well I, what I would assume is sort of pretty good Muslim representation. The main character is sort of a Muslim journalist basically. Okay, then we have Social Media for Writers by Joanne Malon, and uh, I mean this book is as exactly as it says on the tin really. I think if you're already using, you know, social media sites and blogging and whatnot to get the word out about your writing, you can probably get by without it, but it would be a good introduction if you're, if you're new to it, you know? Here we have Go the Fuck to Sleep by Adam Mansbach, illustrated by Ricardo Cortez. This is a, a children's book for adults. If you look on uh, YouTube, actually, there's also a full audio book of this read by uh, Samuel L. Jackson, which is amazing. But I'm going to read you a couple of pages. The cats nestle close to their kittens. The lambs have laid down with the sheep. You're cozy and warm in your bed, my dear. Please go the fuck to sleep. The windows are dark in the town, child. The whales huddle down in the deep. I'll read you one very last book if you swear you'll go the fuck to sleep. The eagles who soar through the sky are at rest like the creatures who crawl, run and creep. I know you're not thirsty, that's bullshit. Stop lying. Lie the fuck down, my darling, and sleep. So, yeah. And finally, for this uh, instalment of the Bookshelf Tour, we have Social Media for Social Good by Heather Mansfield. So this is non-fiction, again, and this is the book you want to read if you're running anything online for, you know, a non-profit or uh, a community organization or anything like that. So there's some great ideas actually I got from this when I was helping out at my local art center. But in general, there is actually stuff you can take to, you know, take and apply from this to other areas of marketing. But it is still kind of a somewhat specialist read. And again, it's just pretty dry. I used to read a lot of this nonfiction when I wanted to be really good at my job. And then I realized I was already really good at my job. So I didn't need to keep reading boring books anymore. Anyway, on that note, that is the end of this installment of my bookshelf tour, so thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, which ones you read. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.